Hello everyone, welcome back. We are here with another fun-filled day of science and I can't wait to get talking with you. So yesterday we read in our story that there are two different kinds of models that scientists use. Sorry, I couldn't think of the name of them for a minute. We learned that when they're creating black boxes or working with black boxes rather, they use models to help them understand what's going on in the black box. First, they use what they can see and what they are able to figure out. And then they use their deductive reasoning skills. They think about what else could be in the box and they use that to create or design a model of what's going on to better understand it. Now we learned yesterday there are two different kinds of models. We learned that there are conceptual models, and those are models that exist either on paper in a drawing, like our schematic diagrams for our circuits, or they are, exist in someone's head. Okay, now someone somewhere had the idea to create a container that helped you to carry liquid around or to keep liquid cold for a longer period of time. They then created a model of it to show and share with people. And then they started mass producing it to make me happy, to make other people happy, to be able to um, carry around their beverages, hold their beverages, and keep them at a low temperature. Models had to happen first. The conceptual model is again the idea or the drawing of what's going on, what the experiment is, or what the item is. A physical model is where you actually create that item. How many of you have toys? I do. I had toys when I was younger. And I have a couple toys from old students, from past students. I have a little model car. How many of you have ever seen a Hot Wheels car? Those are modeled after real vehicles. Now it's not the same size as a vehicle, but it might have a lot of the same details. It's simply a model, an example of what that car is or looks like. Now, after discovering there are two different types of models, we're going to read a little bit more in our story here today to continue to understand them. Our section today is called Changing Models. Scientists have used models for thousands of years. In ancient China, doctors created a conceptual model of the human body. This model featured meridians. These are paths that energy follows as it flows through the body. According to the model, when the energy is blocked, pain results. One Chinese remedy for pain was acupuncture. Tiny needles were inserted along the meridians to restore the flow of energy. Chinese doctors still use this model of the body. Many scientific models, however, have changed over time. New evidence convinces scientists to create new models. In physics, conceptual models have changed many times. In the 17th century, René Descartes, who was alive from 1596 to 1650, had the idea that the Earth was surrounded by a substance he called ether. Ether was thought to be filled with chains of invisible particles. Light passed through this ether. In the 18th century, John Bernoulli, who was alive from 1667 to 1748, had another model for what surrounded the Earth. He thought space was a fluid filled with tiny whirlpools. Bernoulli's model could not be confirmed with scientific evidence. In today's model, the Earth is surrounded by a thin layer of gases called the atmosphere and an expanse of continuous energy called electromagnetic radiation. This energy includes light and radio waves. 
Descartes and other early scientists did not have the basic knowledge or tools needed to detect electromagnetic radiation. They made the best models they could using the science they had. Scientists might spend their whole lives never knowing if the models they propose are correct. It might require advanced research done after their deaths to prove that their models are right or wrong. Now I'll read to you this little orange box. A prize winning model. Making a physical model might seem a little like playing with building blocks or other toys. But for James Watson, who was born in 1928 and is still alive, or was alive when this book was published, and Francis Crick, who was born in 1916, building a model was anything but child's play. In 1952, the two scientists were doing research on deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. DNA is a chemical found in every cell of the human body. DNA is passed from a parent to a child. It determines what traits or characteristics the child will have, such as red hair or blue eyes. Watson and Crick had a theory about the shape of a DNA molecule. They believed it looked like a twisting ladder, called a double helix. In their lab, the scientists used wire and colored beads to build a physical model of DNA. With the model, other scientists could easily understand Watson and Crick's idea about the shape of the DNA molecule. For their work, Watson and Crick shared the 1962 Nobel Prize for Medicine. Then there's a photo, which I'll show you in a second. The caption underneath it reads, In 1962, Nobel Prize winners stand at the presentation ceremony in Stockholm, Sweden. Left to right, there are Maurice Wilkins, Max Perutz, Francis Crick, John Steinbeck, who's an author, James Watson, and John C. Kendrew. So they used models to help explain what they were thinking to everybody else. Sometimes we can't understand what someone is trying to tell us, and it helps us be able to see it. Now today, what I'd like you to do is to go into your assignment, and I want you to tell me why both kinds of models are important, and also what the two models are. And then if you can, give me an example of when you might use one of those models. Okay, so when would you use, I'm not gonna say them again actually. I will post these text photos in your folder so you can reread. And then you can also rewatch today's video or yesterday's video to help you understand about the two kinds of models, okay? They are physical models, and conceptual models. It's important that you understand those two different model types, and you are welcome to use this video, yesterday's video, and the text to help you understand those better if you didn't catch them while we were talking, okay? I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you uh, tomorrow for our field trip, and then you have a three-day weekend ahead of you, which is very exciting. Please come to parent-teacher conferences, they are very important, and I know you are all very, very smart, so you will be able to show up no problem. Goodbye, everyone.